Hello and welcome back to Minecraft 121, The Tricky Trials. Now, as I've said before, this series is all about learning and growing as a builder and a Minecraft player in general. And in order to advance that goal, I am proud to announce to you the foundation of a brand new institution, the Fungosaurus Advanced Innovations Lab. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the home of bleeding edge technology. We've got a lot to do today and not a lot of time to do it. So without any further ado, let's get started. We're fresh back from our trip to the end where we defeated the Ender Dragon, raided a few end cities and of course got a bunch of awesome loot, including a bunch of shulker boxes, which is going to be coming in very, very handy today. But first, let's head inside, go place all of our loot in the chest, and then we can get busy preparing for today's builds. And there's going to be a bunch of them. So let's get down there and let's jump straight in. And the first thing we're jumping into is the mine shaft, because we've got a bunch of mining to do for two reasons. The first reason, of course, being I need a ton of deep slate to do all of the builds I have planned for today. And secondly, it's time to start paying off the penalties for my deaths. I've decided to mine a stack of ore for each death and as such it's about time that I get started. Now I've got one or two rules floating about in my head to make it a little bit more interesting but I think the best thing to do is simply to start mining and refine those rules as we go along. And we have our first ore, some iron ore, which is completely redundant due to my iron farm but it all goes into the pot. Let's mine. It's been about four hours of digging and finally I have all the deep slate I need. I also have a few other awesome things. Let's just take a look at our box. This is the penalty box by the way. We've got a stack and 20 diamond ore. We've got a stack and a half of redstone as well as a few other bits and bobs. But the most important thing is we've got all of the deep slate we need. And with that it's time to head back home because all of my shulker boxes are completely stuffed with all sorts of rubbish and it's time to go put these away in their proper place. And once again, we have emerged in the dark of night. I'm definitely going to have to light up around here because every time I come out of the mines, it seems to be dark and there's creepy crawlies all about. Now there's another problem that I have discovered and that is that my storage system is getting a bit full, which means I need to expand it and I'm going to go in this direction. I thought I had plenty of storage, but it's quite funny how quickly that fills up. It'll also allow me to revamp the storage system a little bit because when you start out, you've got a bunch of chests, but you never know exactly what needs to go into them. I think this room is big enough for now. We're probably going to have to dig another one at some stage because, as I said, storage fills up very quickly. And I'm going to decorate it in the same way that I did the room next door, the original storage room. It's going to have a bunch of tough, some wood, and I'm going to stack it with tons of chests. The walls are done, the floor is done, and the ceiling is done. Our storage room is looking phenomenal. Time to start placing down the chests and I'm going to be stacking them this way so that I can get in as many as I possibly can. And of course I've run out of chests before I finish the entire storage room but that's alright because I've got enough space to empty out all of my shulker boxes and get all my goodies put away. With our storage situation sorted out it's time to start working on our first innovation of the day and that is going to be ladies and gentlemen a gunpowder farm. Now I've built tons of gunpowder farms in the past but I've always used the same one in every series that I've done so far and I think it's time to shake things up. As with everything at the Innovation Center I'm gonna try and come up with as many original ideas and as many original designs as I can. Now in this instance I did borrow a few elements from Impulse over on Hermitcraft. 
I watched a video of him building his creeper farm and I've decided to design my own one incorporating the elements from his. Now, because I have designed it, it's probably not going to be nearly as efficient or nearly as awesome as his is, but I really don't need all that much gunpowder, some rockets, some TNT, and I will be happy. Now you might be wondering why I'm building it on top of my iron farm and that is because this ladies and gentlemen is the future site of the Fungosaurus Advanced Innovations Lab headquarters. So let's get started and let's build ourselves a gunpowder farm. The gunpowder farm is complete and yes, it looks like many, many other gunpowder farms but except for the placement of the glass blocks, I designed everything myself which is probably why it's gonna suck. But it's raining creepers, hallelujah. I have no idea where the spider came from, they really shouldn't be spawning but we'll go with it. So let's move on. The next thing I need to fix up is the killing chamber because I originally designed it to kill iron golems and it's not working quite as well as it should for creepers. So let's just open this up here. Uh, let's not fall down. There we go. Okay. So the problem is that there's one block of lava in the middle and while that might work fine for iron golems because they've got a lot bigger hitbox, it doesn't quite work as well for creepers. Creepers are smaller, they can go hide in the corners and avoid the lava as you'll see there's probably still one, yeah there's one in the corner over there. Now let's just get rid of this creeper, let's see if we can nudge him into the lava, there we go. Now let's get this fixed up. First thing I need to do is place a temporary floor over there just to keep the creepers from raining down on me. Then we can get a little bit closer to the action and place a bunch of signs in the corners that currently do not have lava. So we'll just carefully put one down there, one down in that corner and then in the other two corners as well, over there and over there. Next we'll carefully place down some lava on the signs and try not to incinerate them in the process. With all the lava and the signs in place we can open up the roof and yeah just look at all of those creepers and it sounds like our new kill chamber is indeed working. Now that that's done we can close this back up and then we can move on to the next piece of the puzzle which is of course the storage system. Now I've got a sorting system set up down here but it is of course geared towards collecting iron and poppies which means everything else that falls in there does nothing except gum up the works and we need to rectify that. So let's just clean it out to start with and then we'll open up this area next to it. Now there's a little bit of a snag here in that the trigger system for the crafter that makes my iron blocks is where I would ideally like to have placed the rest of the sorting system. But that's alright, instead of having one room that contains everything we will just have two rooms. And you can hear the creepers sizzling away there which means we need to get this done as soon as possible. Quick and easy our sorting system has been set up, we'll be getting our gunpowder in here and then we have an additional chest for anything else that might fall into the system, such as spiderweb spider eyes and I still have no idea why spiders are spawning on my creeper farm. It's not supposed to, but we'll just move on. Now the next thing I need to build is a sugarcane farm. We've got the gunpowder, we need some sugarcane because I want to produce rockets and I'm going to be building that over here as well so that I have everything I need to produce the rockets in one place. 
So the first thing I need to do is level out this area over here. And once that is done, we'll build our sugarcane farm. The sugarcane will end up here as well, so that everything we need is going to be right at our fingertips. While leveling out the area, I noticed that my iron farm has stopped producing. And there's no way that I can figure out what's going on without getting up here, opening it up and seeing what's happening inside. Now, I don't know why it would have stopped producing. I didn't do anything around here. And this should be a closed system, which means... Ah, jeez. Okay, well, I just completely screwed this up. Um, Stay over there is not supposed to be in the same boat as the villagers. But I think the issue is that one of my villagers has disappeared. Um, I... Seriously, I have no idea how that could have happened. And there's no way I can get that villager out of the boat without letting stay out as well. So let's see what we can do. Let's take this down. And I think I've just made it even worse. Yep, we've got another villager on the loose. And instead of simply bringing in one additional villager, I now have to figure out how to wrangle all of these. And uh, ooh, watch out there, buddy. You're going to fall off the edge. And uh, Oh my goodness. As you might have guessed, that cell is a total loss. I'm going to have to bring in some new villagers to replace the ones that were in there. Don't ask what happened to the one in the boat. Nothing bad happened to him, I swear. Anyway, I think I figured out why my iron farm stopped producing. And it seems to be that the beds are unclaimed by the villagers. I don't know how that would have happened. They were claimed when I put them in. But we're going to try and fix that. And we're going to start by simply moving the zombie out of the way. And then closing up this wall over here. That will allow the villagers to sleep once it gets dark. And they will claim their beds once more. Once the beds have been claimed, I'll move the zombie back in. Close up the entire thing. And hopefully... That'll be the end of all my problems. Now, I'm not looking forward to doing this with all four of the cells because this is really, really frustrating work. You've got to deal with a zombie whacking you. You've got to deal with uncooperative villagers, but it needs to be done. I've moved all the zombies out of the way. I now need to replace the villagers that have mysteriously, very mysteriously disappeared. So let's lay down some rail. And here we go, the final little stretch. In goes my three villagers. And hopefully we can get the cell back up and running. First thing I need to do is, of course, get them out of their minecarts. One, two, and... Of course I can't reach the third one. Why would I be able to reach the third one? Anyway, let's open this up and hope that these guys don't get out of here. Yeah, they've gone to sleep. It should be fine. Let's dig this open. And then we can get this guy out of his minecart. Hopefully he'll just take a bit. Awesome. Okay. All three villagers have claimed their beds. I'm just going to dig it open over here so I can grab my minecart. And then we can get this cell back up and running. Everything is going quite smoothly except for one little hitch when I opened this up and the villagers saw the zombie. An iron golem spawned and of course he spawned in the wrong place. So we've got an iron golem right over there trying to kill my zombie and I need to get rid of him. And I th this was a mistake. This was a, a mistake. And that might be the dumbest thing I have done so far this series. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure what was going through my head there. I wanted to just knock it off onto the ground where I could take it out. And um, yeah, that went horribly, horribly wrong. But it also means that I now have to make this tired old trip back to the village. And I'm getting really tired of it. I think it's time to invest in a portal or something that'll get me home a lot quicker. We're back, and because it's raining, none of the zombies have been fried. So I'll just need to grab all my stuff as quick as I can. I need to eat some food first so I can run. And then let's just grab... Oh, goodness, he's got my sword. That one's got my axe. Uh, let's just get in the water. Stay away from them. Grab all the stuff we can. Ah, I know. So, I might have rage quit right there, I might not have rage quit right there, we'll never know. However, it was about 3 in the morning, I had been playing for roughly about 8 hours, and it was time to go to bed. Proper rest is essential to keep you at the top of your game, and of course, once I had slept, I would once again deliver peak performance and things would go much, much better. Correct? Of course.
Eventually, I managed to get the iron farm back up and running, and I built a sugarcane farm. Just look at it, an absolute beauty. We've all seen a sugarcane farm get built a thousand times. It's nothing new, interesting, or innovative, which is why I've decided to skip it in this video. But now that I have a source of sugarcane, I can sell paper to the villagers, I can sell books to the villagers, and of course, I'll have all the sugarcane I need for my rocket lab. I also spent a good chunk of time lighting up the terrain around my creeper farm, and that serves two purposes. Firstly, we'll have a lot less mob spawning, so this is a safe area, and secondly, this should help increase the efficiency of my creeper farm. Less mobs on the ground means a lot more mobs on the farm. So it's time to start with the next innovation, and that is going to be an automatic rocket crafter. First thing I need to do is, of course, dig out a chamber where I can build said rocket crafter. And I'm going to do that right here next to my sugarcane and gunpowder chest. So everything I need is right at my fingertips and I can streamline the process as much as possible. Now, I haven't figured out how to do this quite yet, so I don't know how big the chamber needs to be. But it's all part of the innovation lab process. Now, while I'm not a redstone genius, I'm not quite a slouch either. I can figure things out for myself mostly. But one thing I haven't quite figured out is, of course, the new crafters. And that is one of the first objectives of the Innovation Lab, is to figure out how to make these things work, how to get the best out of them, and how to make them craft different recipes. Now, I'm going to refrain from looking up any tutorials, any videos that will show me how to do this. I want to figure it out for myself. But I must admit that most of the time, my solutions aren't exactly what you would call elegant. They're not compact. There are probably better ways of doing what I'm trying to do. However, I enjoy figuring it out, and the result is mine. As with most things, the first attempt is usually a complete and utter failure, and this was indeed the case here once again. I've broken down the entire contraption, and I'm starting from scratch, but I did learn a few useful things along the way. So, let's start building a rocket crafter, and we're starting off with the crafter, of course. Then we're going to add a hopper on each side, one over there and one over on this side as well. And we're off to a great start. Next, we're popping down a repeater over there and then adding a line of redstone to either side of it. We'll put down a sticky piston over there and a block of redstone to power the entire thing. We need an observer over here, which can give us a pulse and keep the piston going. And then I think we'll just dig out a little bit more behind here, just to give us a touch more space to work with. Got a piston at the top, and that's going to be our start-stop mechanism. With most of the redstone in place, we can give this thing a face, and then we can probably get around to trying it out. I still need to install the lever to start and stop the whole thing, but it's coming together very, very well indeed, and we should be done quite soon. And of course, I spoke way too early. I realized that you need to put paper into this contraption to get it to work, and I don't want to do that. I want to input sugarcane and gunpowder, not paper and gunpowder, which means I need to add an additional circuit, which will transform the sugarcane into paper and then craft the rockets for me. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Now, I want to keep it looking symmetrical. I don't want to shake things up too much. And I don't want to mess with a circuit that's already in place. So this is going to require just a little bit of thought. And dare I say it, a little bit of innovation. So I think I figured out the system to transform the sugar cane into paper. Uh, let me see. This requires... I think that's going to need an observer over there. Let's just grab one. And let's just go pop it in right over here. And I think it's time to test this, so let's just grab a redstone torch, pop it down here, and then we can see if this entire thing works. Here goes the torch, just get it started, and that should be producing paper all the way. Of course, I'm going to need a system to switch this on and off again, but first, let's make sure it's producing paper, and yeah, look at that paper coming in. And then obviously, that'll get fed through to the crafter that makes the rockets. And the last thing we need to do is create the on-off switch, which will start and stop the paper production. So right now it's on, and there it should be off. Let's close this up, and then finally we can pop some gunpowder and sugarcane into the machine and see if it works. 
Now I'm just going to do a tiny bit of decoration here. Just because it's a prototype doesn't mean it needs to be ugly. Uh, I think I'm just going to grab a few stairs, pop them in there, and then do the same at the top. I'm not going to bother too much about making this look absolutely awesome right now. As long as it looks quite decent, I'm happy. One last switch and it's ready for a test run. So let's start it off, prime it with paper. And let's throw the switch and it's producing rockets. Absolutely brilliant. It works and that means we are pretty much done with the rocket crafting machine. There might be one or two more tweaks needed, but overall it works and I am very, very pleased with what we have done here. So the next step, of course, will be to make this look a little bit better. I've decided to use copper to decorate my rocket crafter and for that I'm going to need to smelt up some more. And that presents the next problem because I am completely out of fuel. I need to dig up some coal and that will give me a chance to fix my pickaxe as well. And while I'm digging up a bunch of coal, I'm also going to be putting down some torches, just light up the area as far as I possibly can, and hopefully increase the efficiency of my creeper farm even more. There's a bunch of caves over here that hasn't been lit up yet, and I think it's time to get in there, put down some torches, and make it safe on the one hand, and on the other hand, the less mobs that spawn in caves and such, the more mobs will be spawning on my gunpowder farm. No, your eyes aren't deceiving you. I am walking back from spawn. And you can guess what that means. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have unfortunately met my end once again at the hands of a very nasty baby zombie. I was merrily lighting up caves, placing down torches, digging up coal when I was accosted by the little... Oh, ouch, okay, that, that, that wasn't very clever. No, 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 no. And I think that sets a new record for the second time in one episode. I have done the dumbest thing I have done so far in this series. So, once again, it's time for the walk of shame back home. I managed to make it back without falling down a cliff again, and I'm hoping all of my stuff is still here. But I think it was out of render distance, which means it should all still be lying around here somewhere. And yeah, there it is. I've got my pickaxe. Now I've just got to collect all of my other junk. And there we go. Almost back to where we were. Except now I have to dig up another stack of ores. Anyway, let's just grab our... Ah, oh, come on. Um, that was not what I was trying to do. Let's just plug that up. And it's not... Oh, come on. Plug. 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 And, and that helped absolutely nothing exactly back where we started. And I can't get my wings because all of my stuff is in my inventory. But there we go. I think we got everything. Nothing lost except a few levels and perhaps a little bit of dignity. It also means that we now have to collect 24 stacks of ore to break even and pay the price for our carelessness. I'll do that before the next episode. But right now I just want to pop down a few more torches and then get out of this cave. It should be relatively safe. So let's make our way back to the tower. Now that we're back here, I think I want to run through a few of the rules that I've come up with for paying my penance. As you know, I've decided to collect a stack of ores for each time I die, but I think it should go a little bit deeper than that. Some ores are a lot more common than other ores, and that means they are easier to find. With that in mind, I have thought that perhaps I could come up with a system where some ores are worth more or less than other ores, for instance, Copper and coal ore are much easier to find than diamond and perhaps I should collect three or perhaps even four stacks of coal for one stack of diamond. Additionally, you will see I've got completed stacks and I've got incomplete stacks. Now the complete stacks I am not allowed to touch, I'm not allowed to break them down until all my deaths have been paid off. As long as the stack is incomplete I'm allowed to break them down but once that stack is complete that's it. It needs to remain in the penalty box until I have collected all of the ores required to pay for my disgrace. That, in addition to all of the gear that I've lost through dying, I think should more than make up for all the times that I have died. And one of these days, I'm going to get around to recording everything in the crypt. Time has passed, work has been done. It's time to reveal to you the Fungosaurus Rocket Lab. I think it is looking absolutely brilliant, but judge for yourself. I've installed some neon lights at the top 
And of course, I've used a ton of copper, which I still need to wax. So I'm just going to clean this off quickly. But the rocket lab isn't the only thing I've done. I have also installed a little room over here where we can collect the iron and the poppies. And I think this is also going to be the control room for my super smelter once I get around to building it. Now we've got gunpowder, we've got sugarcane, but there's one thing that I still need to do, and that is craft some TNT. I want to go mining for some ancient debris in the near future, and that means I'm going to need stacks and stacks of the stuff that goes boom. Now, in addition to making the rocket lab look awesome, I've also spent some time in a creative world where I figured out a machine to craft TNT. And it was a lot more complex than making a machine that crafts rockets. Rockets, you've got two ingredients going in and rockets get spit out. With TNT, you've also got two ingredients, but they need to go into the crafter in a very specific order in order to make the TNT. So I had to figure out how to input five pieces of gunpowder, four pieces of sand and make the machine spit out TNT. It took a while and the machine is an absolute beast. But like all great innovations, it starts with digging a hole. So, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's build the incredible machine. And finally, our TNT crafter is complete and just look at it. It's an absolute beast, it's a beauty, and I love my big machine. So all that's left to do now is actually turn it on and see if it works. Now I'll be honest, this machine is very, very temperamental. It is very finicky and it doesn't leave much space for user error. So I've primed the machine with everything we need to create one stack of TNT. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to start the beast up. It's time to flick the switch and see if it crafts us some TNT. So here we go. We've got the switch over here. That'll release the piston and that will start the process. So here we go. And it's on its way. Let's go see if it's crafting some TNT. And uh, yeah, okay, it's not. Um... Obviously, that means we've got an error somewhere in it. Uh, let me just switch it off and then I will have a look and see what's going on. So let's dig up the barrel, peek in the crafter and ah, there's the culprit. Two pieces of dirt that found its way into the machine. All right, I've reprimed the machine. It's time to flick the switch and hope this time there's nothing to gum up the works. Here we go. It is on, it is working, and is it crafting TNT? It is, and there comes the TNT. Now I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, yes, it's slow, but this is literally the fastest I could get it to work without going into complete meltdown. I'll also freely admit that I can craft TNT much faster just by using a crafting bench, but that's not what the Innovation Lab is about. The Innovation Lab is about having an idea and finding a way to bring that idea to life. And that is exactly what we've done here. We have built a machine that can craft TNT. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it. I'm sure there's machines that can do it much, much better, but this machine is mine and I love it to absolute 
but see it's still going it's still crafting tnt and pretty soon we're gonna have a complete stack just look at it going look at it working it is beautiful it is a true creation of the fungosaurus advanced innovation lab and with that done i think we can well and truly say that it has been a great day's work and it sounds like the machine is empty so yeah there we go one stack of tnt successfully created absolutely brilliant and the spirit of the innovation lab is truly alive ladies and gentlemen let's take a look at what we've created it looks a little bit funky at the moment but we're gonna build an awesome building over here we're gonna cover all of that up and it's gonna look phenomenal and with that i think it's time to take a look at some of the other plans i have in the future now i selected the spot because of all of these mountains over here and i've come up with a plan for these mountains each one of them is going to feature its own unique style so one of the mountains will be dwarven one will be sci-fi one will perhaps be steampunk one fantasy etc etc and then connecting all of these fantastic kingdoms together is going to be a sky rail a transport system which connects all of these kingdoms together and turns it into one beautiful unified world but with that ladies and gentlemen i think we have officially run out of time for this episode i really do hope you enjoyed the episode leave a like if you did and if you want to see some more innovation be sure to hit that subscribe button but this is fungosaurus rex saying until next time beautiful people stay awesome Bye-bye.